Inoculation theory is a branch of psychological research offering a framework for neutralizing misinformation. Just as exposing people to a weakened form of a virus develops resistance to the real virus, exposing people to a weakened form of misinformation builds immunity so they're less likely to be misled by real world misinformation. A good analogy to understand inoculation and misinformation is the movie World War Z. Misinformation is like zombies. We see the same arguments and fallacies happening over and over again. They just won't die. In the movie, Brad Pitt is trying to find a cure to the zombie virus. In the end, there is no cure, but he discovers a way to stop the zombie virus from spreading. By inoculating himself, he's no longer a threat from the zombies. He was able to stop the zombie apocalypse through inoculation. That and cool, refreshing product placement. It's really difficult to change the mind of a science denier. People who are dismissive of scientific evidence distrust any information that threatens their beliefs. That doesn't mean we should give up trying, but if we have limited resources, a better use of our time is stopping misinformation from spreading rather than trying to change the minds of those promoting the misinformation. In other words, inoculate people against the misleading techniques of science denial in order to build public resilience against misinformation. How do we deliver misinformation in a weakened form? There are two elements to an inoculating message. First, warning of the threat that you might be misled by misinformation. Second, counter arguments that explain how the misinformation is wrong. There are two main inoculation techniques. The first method, fact-based inoculation, shows how the misinformation is wrong by explaining the facts. The second method, logic-based inoculation, explains the rhetorical techniques or logical fallacies the myth uses to mislead. Both methods are effective and often the two work in combination. In Van der Linden's 2017 inoculation experiment, the misinformation he showed to participants was the Global Warming Petition Project. This is a website that argues there isn't a scientific consensus on climate change because 31,000 science graduates signed a petition stating humans weren't disrupting the climate. To inoculate people against this misinformation, Van der Linden explained the different ways that the Global Warming Petition Project was misleading. It was an online petition with little quality control. So you see Star Wars characters and Spice Girls on the list. While 31,000 seems like a lot, it's a tiny fraction of the millions of Americans with a science degree. And it lists anyone with a science degree, featuring computer scientists, medical scientists, engineers, but less than 1% of the signers have expertise in climate science. When participants in the experiment were inoculated before being shown the misinformation, the facts were able to have a positive effect. The misinformation had been mostly neutralized. Around the same time that this research was happening, I was conducting a similar experiment to Van der Linden, testing how to inoculate people against climate misinformation. Coincidentally, I even used the same misinformation, the Global Warming Petition Project. In my experiment, one group was shown just the misinformation by itself. Amongst this group, the misinformation had a negative and polarizing effect. Another group was shown an inoculating message before being shown the misinformation. But in contrast to Van der Linden's experiment, I didn't mention the Global Warming Petition Project at all. Instead, I focused on one of the techniques used to mislead, the technique of fake experts, or argument from false authority. This is where a person appeals to their own expertise and yet don't have the relevant expertise. We all understand in real life that we don't want someone with irrelevant expertise when it comes to something important. You wouldn't want a computer scientist performing heart surgery on you. Even if they do have a science degree, it's not the right type of expertise. And yet fake experts appealing to their own expertise are frequently used to confuse the public. Rather than mention the specific misinformation I was targeting, I instead explained the misleading technique of fake experts in general terms and used tobacco misinformation as an example of this technique. This is an example of logic-based inoculation. I found that this type of general inoculation completely neutralized the misinformation. And it happened across the political spectrum. Whether people are politically conservative or liberal, no one likes being misled. Because of this universal aversion to being misled, 
logic-based inoculations can be effective across different audiences. In a different experiment, I collaborated with Emily Varaga, So Jung Kim and Letitia Bode to directly compare the logic-based versus the fact-based approaches in addressing the climate myth that we should emit more carbon dioxide because it's plant food. The fact-based correction explained that plants need a number of conditions in order to flourish, including a steady supply of water and a comfortable temperature range. Carbon dioxide emissions cause climate change, which disrupts these conditions. The logic-based inoculation explained that the plant food myth commits the fallacy of oversimplification, concentrating on one factor for plant growth, but ignoring other factors. It used a cartoon analogy to illustrate oversimplification. The example of arguing that the only food we need is ice cream because it has calcium. We also tested another factor in this experiment. Did order matter? If people saw the correction after the misinformation, in other words, a debunking, did that have a different effect to if people saw the correction before the misinformation? In other words, a pre-bunking. We found that people's misperceptions or belief in the climate myth was strongest when they were just shown the misinformation. Misinformation matters. When people were shown the logic-based correction, it reduced belief in the myth regardless of whether it was a pre-bunking or a debunking. Order didn't matter with logic-based corrections. But with the fact-based correction, order did matter. It was effective as a debunking if the fact-based correction was the last thing people were shown but if the misinformation was the last thing people read, the myth cancelled out the fact-based correction. So if you're using facts to counter misinformation, the order can matter. Facts can be cancelled out by misinformation. If we're in the business of explaining facts to people as scientists, educators or science communicators, it's important to recognise that our facts are vulnerable to misinformation. This highlights the importance of logic-based corrections or when we communicate facts, also make people aware of how the facts can be distorted. It's like covering our facts with some protective bubble wrap as we send them out into the cold, hard world. Finally, the logic-based approach has another powerful advantage. It works across topics. I was able to inoculate people against the climate myth without even mentioning it. Once people are aware of a technique of misinformation, they can potentially see it in other examples of misinformation. Logic-based inoculation is like a universal vaccine against misinformation.